Good morning, everyone. We're on day 11 on tapping for recovery from fear. And FYI, I'm leaving my window open and my dogs, my housemates are in here. It's just too freaking hot when I close it. So I hope they don't bark, but it's possible that they will. But I'll try and shush them. But Carrie, you brought a good one um, about clutter and clutter or... Um, there's a difference, obviously, between clutter and hoarding, and I know my understanding of the difference um, in, from psychological terms is how much it impacts our life. So that's the key. Um, um, hey, is that? Hey, hey, Tana, how are you? I'm waving back, and I've got yours down, and I'll do yours tomorrow, um, just so you know your request. And I love when people give requests. It's just, it's, it just benefits everybody and so easy because then I just read them and do them. So thanks for posting that as well. But so I'm clearing out stuff. There, so the difference between say clutter and hoarding is how much does it impact your life? If it's really impacting your life, um, and I know hoarding is such a strong word and especially with the shows and everything, you know, people are s stacked around stuff. So you have to determine for yourself what makes sense for you about it. But um, it's funny, I'll say this too, my my husband always jokes with me, he was like, Marty, I swear to God, you're like Mormon on some level because you stockpile food. And I tell, he's like, so you have that thing going like if a disaster hit, we wouldn't run out of food. <laughs> so, I mean, I have a little bit of that myself, um, but how much does it, in, it, 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 it's funny, it irritates him more than me. I'm just like, what's in there? It's on sale, so I buy multiples. So just know like, does it impact you? Is it, and, and, and Carrie and yours, a, a clear sign of the stress and anxiety when you think about getting rid of stuff. So this is um, the psychosomatics that I, I know about clutter. Um, is the idea behind, I think that's you, Phyllis. Hi. And I, there's somebody else here and I can't tell who. So the, the difference, um, if you think about clutter and stuff, the, uh, um, the, the idea behind it is, um, it, we're really like, oh, oh, hey, hey, Cel Celestine, is that how you say your name? I, um, Celeste, do you go by C Celestine? I love your name. I, obviously, I don't depend on me to say names right because I'm a goofball that way. Um, so it, the idea is if you think about um, hoarding is like insulating or clutter. It doesn't have to be hoarding. I'm going to kind of try and avoid that word because I know it's such a strong word, but clutter, I've got clutter too. But um, it, the idea is if it starts, um, it's a way we protect ourselves. If you think about it, it's much like if we carry excess weight, we're protecting ourselves. So we're insulating ourselves from people. That's the idea behind it. And if, if you really kind of know that it's this way to protect yourself and, and carry for you the background you've told me about a little bit on this page about not, you know, the fear of getting close to people, it would make sense that this is a, a layer that you've put there to protect yourself. So to me, when we can always, always, always realize whatever behavior we have that we're doing that bothers us, but we're unable at the time to sort of clear it out, it's always about protecting ourselves. So when you line it up that way, you get less judgmental of yourself about it and realize you're actually trying to do a good thing for yourself. It, it, what most of us do, I do this included, is like, oh my God, I'm doing that again. And we go down into judgment, which creates even a, more of a barrier to be able to release something. So the first key is always about love and acceptance of self, which I say that and I know it's simple in theory, not easy to practice. But if you can think about it this way, any behavior that you notice about yourself, say that bothers you or you judge is, how can I see this from a more loving perspective? That's a great question to ask yourself. How can I see this behavior from a more loving perspective? Because there is a loving perspective about it. Um, the problem is most of us got judged often and harshly, so we learned to treat ourselves the way we were treated. But how can I see this behavior from a loving perspective? So if you think about um, clutter, I definitely move piles. I call myself organized disorganization. Um, I'm like, like my husband will be like, where's that bill? And I'm like, it's in that pile. It's about a third of the way down. And I, I usually have one pile. But... Um, 
And I'm going to tell you, it's enough that every now and then I'm like, I'll, I'll just go through it and then and file it and stuff. But I let stuff accumulate until I reach a point where I'm ready to do it. And But it's how does it impact your life? Does does it make you feel, oh God, ugh. Um, and, and Carrie, what you expressed is, sorry about that, I just had a call come in. As soon as you start to think about like giving it away, that panic that you're feeling, think about it this way. You're thinking of giving up your safety. <laughs> of course you're going to panic about that. So if you go to judgment of self about it, try and remember like every time I think about, and this is psychosomatically, get, get, releasing some of this, I'm actually thinking of releasing my safety. So therefore I will feel really vulnerable if I do this. So that's what I want to tap on about this. So let's just dive in and start tapping. Even though I can't do this, that's releasing my safety. This clutter is like my life raft. I'm not going to give it up yet. And I want to not judge myself for this. Even though the idea of ridding myself of this, that is really scary for me. That causes panic, fear, anxiety. That will feel too vulnerable. I choose to acknowledge my feelings now. Even though I want to do it, and I don't. So I have this inner battle going on. The part of me that wants to free myself of this clutter battles the part of me the little kid in me that does not feel safe being that vulnerable. <clears throat> Go to the eyebrow. This inner battle. These two parts of me. I do want to clean up the clutter. <laughs> no, I don't. What if I can honor the part of me that feels the panic and terror about releasing my clutter? Because it's not really clutter. It's safety and protection. It's a way I learn to insulate myself and feel safe. Even the word clutter sucks. <laughs> the word hoarding sucks. Because somehow, somehow inherent in those two words is guess what? Judgment. And I've judged myself enough. My clutter is protection. And if I start to see it that way, maybe I'll judge myself less. By calling it what it is, it starts to make more sense as to why I feel fear and panic when I think about releasing it. So what if I can honor this part of me? Because it's such a young part of me that is so terrified and afraid 
of feeling that vulnerable? Every time I start to give stuff away, I feel less safe. And then I judge the hell out of myself. I probably sound something like this. What the hell is wrong with you? Put your big girl panties on. Put your big boy panties on. Just do it. Grow up. There's that voice that has no compassion, no understanding for how unsafe it feels for me to release my protection. What if I can talk to this part of me with some loving kindness? Allow the feelings to surface in a really honoring way. Every time I try to discard something and I feel that fear and panic, what if I can honor that child in me by doing my best to sit with the feeling, just tap while I'm feeling it and allow it to surface as best as I'm able. Because the only thing I have to do about this right now is release the epic self-judgment, not make myself bad or wrong or stupid or lacking in willpower because I can't do it right now. What if the way out of this is through feeling fully, allowing myself to feel the emotions in a really honoring way. And the more I do that, the more I start to free myself of this judgment. And then what if it becomes so much easier to release my protection that shows up in stuff because I'm protecting myself emotionally by finally honoring my own feelings and no longer judging myself. Therefore, I don't need to protect myself from that. And then take a breath. I just think that's the huge key. Always, 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 always is go to the, the self-judgment part. Hang on, let me, I hear the dings and it drives me crazy. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> um, so, um, it's it just the judgment. That's to me what happens. And even the words clutter, hoarding, it's like there's such inherent judgment in it. Instead of like, you know, it's protection. That is literally a, the hugest part of it is insulating, protecting yourself. Like, and, and if you've had a history where people aren't safe and people aren't trustworthy, you're going to feel panic and fear about even trying to get rid of a piece of paper. And that to me is it is when we we can sit and honor ourselves and our emotions pay attention to the judgment it's always like go to what how old do i feel right now that is such a it's such an important question every time you think about say oh my god i start to clean something up and i feel the panic how old do i feel right now i guarantee you you're gonna feel young 
And when you have, when your little kid is running your show and your little kid's like, I can't give this away. I'm giving up my protection. When you start to honor that part of you and allow that part of you to feel the emotion and surface, the need to protect yourself just starts to be released because you're honoring you. You're not abandoning yourself. You're staying present with yourself and present with the emotion. I really like this technique of just when you're when you can is is just letting the emotion surface feeling the emotion you don't need to say anything about it like you start to say you go to start to clean something up and you feel the panic and just sit with the panic just sit with it as if you're sort of meditating but you can tap and you sit and tap and tap and tap and tap and just allow the feeling allow the emotion while you're tapping and really just pay attention to the emotion stay present to it because you're, you're just staying present with yourself. And it doesn't mean it's easy to do it because I've done this and it's like, oh my God. But, but if you stick with it and just l trust the tapping, it, you know, like and know that eventually it's gonna, it's gonna feel, it might spike, but you're gonna feel relief. That is huge. That is you honoring you. That's you reparenting yourself. Doing for yourself what was never done for you. Hey, baby, how are you feeling? Oh, you feel sad? That's okay, baby. You just go ahead and feel sad. That's okay. You know, I'll give you something to cry. But I mean, I can't even say that now. And I'm like, really? So think about just honoring yourself that way. And Tana, what are you saying? Whoa, so much truth. I've been addressing these issues for a while now, and it's deep. See, reinforcement is so helpful. Some new realizations too. You, thanks, Marty. You bet, Tana. It's, it just always goes back to how can I honor myself emotionally? How can I realize? But we just jump to judgment. It's, it's astonishing to me, as much as I've tapped where my brain so automatically goes to worst case scenario, and it's just learning to shift that. Is it getting better? Oh hell yeah. But it's like, when I see it, it's more like an observation. Like, wow, it's just fascinating how, bam, my brain goes there. And I think I said this on one of the other videos. I woke up the other night and I'm like, whoa, whoa, where's this coming from? It was such a, like, a cesspool of negative thinking. It was just like, whoa. So I was just like, I'm just going to put a meditation on. And I just listened to the meditation and I soothed it and felt better. Um... So those are the things we do on a daily basis to help shift it. So anyway, Tana, Joanne, Celestine, and um, Phyllis, those who I know who is here, and anyone I miss, just thanks for being here live. And um, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, my daughter and I are hitting the road tomorrow. So the road show begins starting tomorrow for the rest of the 21 days. So um, who knows where I'll be tapping from. <laughs> That's it. Bye for now. Have a great rest of your day. And I might be back doing something else. You never know.